You're not supposed to be able to hear eggnog. Welcome to Diet Trying. Why buy when you can make? I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Michael Hand. Soda water, fizzy water, seltzer water, carbonated water, whatever you call it, our office utterly obsessed. Yeah, so we thought, why not build our own fizzy water machine? But it turns out that carbonation isn't quite so easy. It's just bubbling CO2 through water, although it kind of is exactly what we're gonna do. It is what we're doing, but if you just bubble CO2 through, carb through water, it's not gonna work the way you would expect. It's not gonna be fizzy. You need a little bit of science for that to work. So what you need is force, low temperature, and turbulence is really the the ingredients to this. Okay, so gas and water wants to stay separate. The only way to bring them together is through force. We do that by applying enough pressure and the CO2 yeah. molecules are actually forced apart and become surrounded by water molecules. It's like a giant little pit of molecules can yeah. you punk rock on. And I'll be honest, the easiest way to carbonate something is really go the soda stream route. You got a fixed container, you fill it with water or something else, you force in the carbon dioxide to increase the pressure. It's simple, there's nothing to build, just bring it home. The only real downside is the tiny bottles, you only feel like this much at a time, and the price you're paying for the convenience of picking up CO2 at a store and not a welding shop. Yeah, that can be expensive after a while. Yeah, it gets expensive really fast if you drink a lot. But we could still take that same style and kind of emulate it, I guess? Well, yeah, the, the, the carbonation predates the soda stream. It predates the freaking soda thing at the back of the store. You know, all you really need is some hoses, fittings, and a bottle. The build is really simple. This is a two liter soda bottle. It's been recycled. We're gonna be using these regular old two liter pet plastic soda bottles uh, to make our fizzy beverages. Cool. Smaller bottles work too. Do yourself a favor and start with like seltzer or fizzy water bottles because of the thing we had with the yeah. orange soda. I mean, it was a nice aftertaste. This is a carbonator. This is the thing that makes this so simple. Liquid Bread is a, a brew supply company out of Florida and they sell these on Amazon. This allows us to attach a standard soda bottle top to this thing. This is a ball lock connector. Um, that's pre-attached to this gas line. And you know, I make it look like it's really hard to do. If I just went like this, all you gotta do is pop it on. That's like a standard keg tap. And we bought it pre-assembled off Amazon for 10 bucks. By the way, carbonator is 13 bucks. The ball lock pre-assembled with the gas tube here, the 5 16th or quarter inch line is like uh, 10 bucks, 12 bucks. It comes with this little stainless steel clamp, which normally you would nice. attach to your regulator. Um, because I use my regulator and my CO2 tank for a bunch of stuff, I use a quick coupling. So this is like $1.50 for the tape and three bucks for a bag full of fittings. Cool. And these were completely separate. They just were made to work together yes. pretty much. Well, this, this was made specifically to work with these because these are really common uh, in the soda keg industry. And Got it. There we go, snap that on. The next thing, it starts getting, the farther away you get from the plastic bottle, the more expensive it gets. The okay. next thing you need is a regulator. Um, oh. Dual gauge regulators for 40 to 50 bucks. Um, I like dual gauge regulators. You can buy a single gauge regulator. It'll tell you what the uh, pressure is of the output. But dual gauge tells you the inside of the tank and the output. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Actually, if you focus in on the regulator, you're about to watch something really cool happen as I put the quick coupling on here. Well, actually, it won't happen until I turn the valve on the tank on. Ah. Well, you know, you'd think after a thousand years of running these, I'd be good at snapping them together. I probably shouldn't be holding this. Let's no, it. it'll be fine. Hey, look, you know what? Facial scars eventually heal, right? Chicks dig scars, glory is forever, pain is temporary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. <laughs> so what we've done here is our CO2, which is being measured at this gauge. It's regulated here. It's coming out about 55 to 60 PSI. That's probably a little high for most people, but I like particularly fizzy water. Mm. And I think this gauge reads a little bit low. Uh, does it feel drum-like? It's very drum-like. So we have the pressure. That was... I'd call that drum-like. So we need turbulence, right? Yeah. So if you're using like, some people use big uh, corny kegs, which are those big old beverage tanks that used to come around for premix. Mm -hmm. um, and that you just roll that back and forth across your lap. In this case, I just for fun, just get a little aggro with it. I don't think we need to. It's probably- I was just always told that shaking soda bottles is a bad thing. This is a standard like 20 ounce paintball tank. This is more than enough to get most yeah. people started. Yeah, I've seen these around much more often than having one of those lying in your backyard. Well, here's the thing, right, though. Uh, this tank will carbonate well over a thousand liters of water. Wow. Right, so you get a ton of refills off mm. of this. Your local welding supply shop probably doesn't refill these. You'll have to find a paintball shop. Yeah. Your local welding supply shop will probably have five pound tanks, which are derp, uh, in between these and these. We'll still do a ton of refills. Um, so what about the CO2 inside? 
Well, are they all good to use? My understanding is CO2 is CO2 is CO2. In okay. some cases, some people have reported that paintball shops like oil or pre-oil their containers or keep oil mm. in their containers to help lubricate the guns, and that can create taste issues. Um, so I, that, you know, we've been using how many gallons of water have we drunk off of this CO2 Way tank? Way too many, and we're not dead yet. Yeah, so. <laughs> you know, everybody I know who's done this is basically using CO2 from a welding supply shop. It's pure because if it's not pure, it screws up the welding and they lose whatever they're welding together. So, you know, people seem to trust that. So um, around here, a five pound tank pre-filled, which makes it a pretty good deal. It's like, you know, 50 to 70 bucks for a tank off of Amazon or uh -huh. online. Uh, around here, it's like 65 to $80 for a CO2 tank, but you get it pre-filled. So nice. you get the CO2 for free and the cost of the tank. It evens out then. It evens out, you know, member shipping and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so altogether, um, all of this is like 100 to 150 dollars. Okay. Which is more than a soda stream. Yeah, a little high startup cost, but I guess if you drink a lot of carbonated water, it might be worth it after refills. Well, if you're paying like a buck fifty a liter for fizzy water, and this is going to cost you a hundred bucks for a thousand liters, you're paying less, right? It's, yeah. Well, it's kind of funny, right? The the, the kind of DIY fizzy water pioneers at KK.org, I think they calculated they were paying two cents a liter oh, for wow. fizzy water with their rig that they built. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. Especially if you're, you know, getting into it in volume. Like I said, my family, they'll roll through a case of fizzy water at 10 or 20 bucks a case in a weekend if it's wow. hot. So this, my wife is so stoked about. Um, yeah, you wanna try it? Are you ready? Yeah, this has been sitting, we've shook it. Do we have so. a glass? I can get one. There, do you wanna do the ceremonial carbonator top removal? Oh, do you have your glasses? Oh good, safety We're glasses. Good. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> oh, I love that, that steam coming off. Perfect. All right. That's, that's fizzy. <laughs> <laughs> it's good though. It's like 40 to 40, like 40 or 45 pounds probably is a little more rational. Okay. So we did Ooh. water. Yes, I like that. What else can we carbonate? Coffee? Orange juice? <sighs> Eggnog. <laughs> Is that coconut water? Yeah, it is. Wow. I'm really excited about this one, actually. Uh, that actually may be more frightening than the egg. <laughs> so, coconut water. Coconut water, we have orange juice, sports drink, apple juice, coffee, and of course, the eggnog. The infamous eggnog. <laughs> Word of warning, eggnog and coffee got really foamy when we when we carbonated them, so yeah. when you open them, open them over a sink. They tend to expand a little bit. Explode, actually, <laughs> is the word Michael's looking for. And of course, fizzy water for the less adventurous crew. Um, so this seems like a very foodie thing to do. It is a very foodie thing to do. We are actually very foodie people in our own simple way. I mean, I love food. I love food. <laughs> I love, yeah, actually, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna tell you about a book. I'm gonna tell you about Audible Podcast. Com DIY. If you want to sort of get into the idea of adventure and food, uh, Medium Raw, A Bloody Valentine to the World of Food and the People Who Cook. It's by Anthony Bourdain. The dude's incredible. If you've ever worked in a kitchen and you haven't read Kitchen Confidential, you're in for a treat. Both of those are available as full unabridged audiobooks. If you go to audiblepodcast.com slash DIY. And if you do that, you can get a free book so you can listen to it for free. Yeah, which is perfectly awesome. Plus, you'll be supporting Die Trying and helping us keep the show to yeah. you. Uh, Audiblepodcast.com slash DIY. All right, so we should get some people to try these out. I'm excited to see their reactions. It's going to be the best. <laughs> how do you guys know how to do this? Are you just <laughs> guessing? Oh, it's like Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, this is preferable to regular Powerade. Did you just give me bad milk? No, I don't think so. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
That's good. I would prefer cream first. Oh, God. That looks like a Hmm. That's good. Yeah, it just looks like a frothy, freshly poured eggnog. I wouldn't be... You can drink it. Is there booze in it? Oh, you can hear it. You're not supposed to hear liquid. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's just like eggnog, but it like hurts a little. <laughs> oh my god, that's terrible. <laughs> you ready for this? I am. Yeah. Coffee? I'd try it again. Eggnog. It was interesting. <laughs> the water is the best though. This was a cheap build for me. I already had the mother of all CO2 cans, a regulator, and a family that can blow through a $25 case of Gerolsteiner in a couple days. Yeah. We'll see how it goes in the office though. But if you do try this build, make sure to send us pictures at DIY Trying on Twitter or DIY Trying at revision3.com. You can send ideas for projects there too, and we totally want you to comment down below please. on YouTube. And if you have ideas for projects, send them out there. Let us know what you think. And please subscribe to youtube.com slash die trying. Or if you want to go RSS route, we're at DIY Trying at or DIY Trying.com. Yeah. Make sure to hit the share tab and then all the feeds are all the way below. down at the bottom. They're yeah. there. Uh, come back next week. We're getting ready for Christmas. Christmas. And New Year's hangovers. Mm. Not that we need that, right? No, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, Rod, you want to tell my wife I'm going to be late today? <laughs> <laughs>